In this third part on nuclear radiation, I want to mention some of the biological effects. Although many agree that no level of radiation is safe, it really comes down to a matter of chance. Since negative effects of radiation increase with increased exposure, we should do what we can to keep the radiation around us to a minimum. No nuclear reactor could explode like an atomic weapon. But there are important lessons from the period of atmospheric testing. After atomic weapons were developed in World War II, the USA and the former Soviet Union started to explode nuclear weapons in the atmosphere. Not surprisingly, the levels of radiation started to climb in the world until 1963, when the United Nations agreed to stop testing in the atmosphere. Why? When uranium-235 undergoes fission, it produces a number of smaller elements. What are those smaller fragments? Certainly there are neutrons, beta particles, gamma rays, and a large production of energy. In addition, there are elements. And these are radioactive isotopes and fission products. I got this from Wikipedia. Notice there are both long and short-lived species. Although long-lived species stay around for a long time, they emit radiation slowly and cause fewer problems than the medium-lived products. They decay more quickly and produce more radiation in a shorter time. All these elements are unnatural in our environment and there are too many to discuss, so I will focus on one, strontium-90. It has a half-life of 28.9 years. For comparison, uranium-235 has a half-life of 704 million years and uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. That is, if you start with one gram of uranium-235 and one gram of strontium-90, in 28.9 years we have half a gram of strontium-90, but it takes 704 million years to get to half a gram of uranium-235. So trontium-90 decays relatively quickly. It has a high yield, which means it is a major fission product. It is a beta emitter with a large decay energy. So in the period of nuclear testing, the levels of strontium-90 started to climb around the world. Notice strontium lies one period below calcium in the periodic table. It therefore has properties similar to calcium which is essential for life and a major component of bones. Strontium-90 can be taken up by the body and replaces calcium. Starting in the 1950s, strontium-90 levels increased. This map shows the distribution of the strontium-90 fallout in the USA from the Nevada test site. You can see that the wind blows from west to east and distributed strontium-90 far and wide. It got into dairy products and into our bones, especially those of growing children. When it decays, the large energy emitted causes damage and can lead to bone cancer. Since the banning of atmospheric testing, and with a half-life of about 30 years, the strontium-90 concentration in our environment is dropping, being about 20% of what it was before the ban in 1963. Strontium-90 and many other radioactive elements are also byproducts of nuclear radiation. That is why it is so important to keep them contained and why a reactor meltdown presents serious health hazards. Recall that the Three Mile Island partial meltdown in 1979 released no significant amounts of radiation. The Chernobyl meltdown certainly did lead to wide contamination and contributed to the deaths and birth defects of many thousands of people. Here is the distribution of radiation across Europe one week after the Chernobyl meltdown. Radiation quickly travels far and wide. The recent Japanese earthquake caused major damage to the Fukushima nuclear plant and released radiation into the environment. At the time of writing this, a meltdown is suspected, but it has not yet been officially declared. The release of radiation is the main reason why the world is so concerned about the crisis.